Hello gamers, welcome to the stream. We're playing a little bit of Citizen Sleeper, and we're gonna do a little bit of cooking, and then I'm gonna eat <laughs> while we're playing more Citizen Street Sleeper. That's the plan for today. In fact, I have a, I set up a little special. This will be where I'm cooking. We'll see how it goes. I don't know how it's gonna go. So this is fun for everybody. <laughs> Hello, hey everybody. Uh, a shout out, my, my partner said, that their mother and their mother's sister watched the stream because they were interested i guess in hello fresh or maybe just my streaming unclear anyway hello if you're watching hi jan and judy thank you for watching <laughs> uh we're doing uh as another sponsored stream officially sponsored by hello fresh oh did i ping everybody i needed to ping on this no i didn't hold on i'm gonna ping somebody I did, okay, no, I'm very responsible, hello. Uh, yeah, so today's stream uh, is once again officially sponsored. I'm like low-key sponsored for like 30 days, that's the span at which my code will be uh, usable, but there are two like specifically sponsored streams and this is the second of those. Uh, and that means I say things like, hey, use my link or go to hellofresh.com and use the code POGHF22471 for 21 free meals plus free shipping. Uh, you can also just a chat exclamation point HelloFresh in the chat and that link will pop up, which will make that all of that easier. Oh, the closed captions aren't up. Hold on. What's happening there? What's happening there? You all can hear me though, right? Hello, hello, hello. Oh yeah, there we go. Okay. Hey everybody. Um, thank you for pointing that out. I hadn't even realized. They were just being fussy. Sometimes that happens. You know, sometimes we're all just a little fussy. I think that's fair. Is the free shipping for all free for all 21 meals? I believe so. I think the 21 meals covers um it, it is my understanding is that it's like yes. I think it's for all 21 meals. <laughs> uh, anybody who's used a code can can answer that better than I am, I think. Um let me uh, do my call to action. Well, the first call to action is use that link, but let me do uh, my poetry reading, which is of course my implementation of a talking point. This one comes from Basho, who if you're not familiar with is a, um, arguably the most famous haikuist, at least in the West, is translated by Robert Hass. Uh, and it's, uh, it goes like this. Coolness of the melons flecked with mud in the morning dew. That's just it. Haiku is really good to the point. <laughs> um, anyway, I got my I got my box in, so I've got as you can see, I've got I've got my little uh, ingredients list and stuff. So at some point, I'm gonna hustle over, and we're gonna I'm gonna get that. Oh wow, that really covers my face. <laughs> that really covers my face when I'm in this mode. That I'm gonna adjust that. Well timed to be my badger. <laughs> um, but yeah, I already so I already cooked one of the meals. I cooked the um, pecan encrusted chicken dish with side salad, and I was really really pleased with it. The thing that pleased me the most is that at the when I was done cooking and I had eaten the dinner, which was excellent. It was very easy to make and very easy to eat. <laughs> Easier to eat than to make, but that's usually the point. Uh, I just like, I went to the sink cause I was like, oh, I probably have to clean up a bunch of spoons and measuring cups and stuff, but there just wasn't anything. And that was such a nice feeling. And I'm excited to have that feeling again because I don't really have a way of washing dishes in the office. So I'm going to have to take all the dirty dishes with me home and that'll be annoying. <laughs> um, but I think it'll be pretty straightforward. This is a, a it's a one pot soup. Um, that we're making, which is good because I only have one pot with me. Um, so if it needs additional pots, I read through the directions. They're really, really straightforward. So I think it'll be straightforward to make it, but we'll see. I'll work up an appetite first though. Doing some scrapping, doing some hauling, uh, doing some bartending. Hobbs, that's a good tweet. <laughs> that's a good tweet. Oh, happy birthday, Toast the Cat. 
What an appropriately food named birthday cat. Happy cat borth is, <laughs> is also a thing you can say. It's b dangerously close to happy cat broth. So just watch yourself. Six years old. Happy birthday, Toast. Are you, are you giving Toast any, like, special treats? Special little treats for the birthday? What am I doing in this game? I have an apartment. I guess I'm working. I need to work on this. I'm going to do this once or twice, and then we're going to take some medicine, and then we're going to hack um, the planet. So to speak. Uh, let's do let's do a three on this one. Do I need any more data? All right, that got me one tick and a little bit of cash. Should I save this one for data? I don't think I need data right now, really. What kind of what kind of mushrooms you need? Matsutake. Oh, I already gave. I think I already gave him the Matsutake. Work in the compressor. Hmm. Let's work. Yeah, let's do this sidereal thing. I think we're 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 really close. All I need is one more tick, and then we can get a ticket and give it to those nice people we met. Oh, everybody gets cake, <laughs> cat cake? You got a cat cake mix? Oh my god, that's so adorable. It's, it's adorable. Oh, I didn't do good, huh? I didn't, didn't finish that tick, huh? It's extremely adorable. The Red Bee, thank you for the resubscribe. I feel like every few months I see Jenna online, I think, oh, she's the best, oh. And I drop a sub or give some subs. Anyway, here's a sub, thank you. <laughs> what a lovely message. Cat cake is really, really good. Please tell us how it turns out. I'm so perplexed at what that could be composed of. Do cat, our cat, is a cat gonna like cake? I guess there's no reason why they wouldn't, but there's also no reason why they would. Yeah, that's what I'm wondering. Is it like a meat cake? <laughs> the cat cake is turkey flavored and has a yogurt flavored frosting. Incredible. So it's more of a, a meatloaf, kind of more of a meatloaf vibe. The Red Bee, thank you for the gift subs. <laughs> uh, oh, I think maybe I'll just, I'll just finish off the sidereal one and then I'm gonna take the medicine. We got, we got, we've got things to do. Can't be just winning lotteries for friends all the time. That can't be what our only job is. Ooh. Each shift, a crowd of would-be workers gather outside the shipyard, each of them clinging to a four-digit number printed on receipt paper. These are their assignment numbers, and you're either called for a shift or you aren't. As you arrive, the crowd is restless and chatter rumbles through the lines. For those who, like you, have graduated to the work team, shifts are guaranteed. Having just walked out of the meeting with a supervisor where you're praised for your efforts, you feel the glow of a job well done. Yet you can't help but feel empathy for those huddled as you pass, waiting for their number to come up. You keep your head down as you leave the shipyard, feeling a little guilty as you do. Hey, sleeper, wait up! It's Lim! Lim's voice trembles as he shouts above the rumble of the crowd, and you turn to see him pushing through, Mina crying in his arms. Lim! Good to see ya, friend. He's breathing hard and after shouldering, he's breathing hard after shouldering through the waiting workers. You made the team work. Good. You made the work team. Good for you. He tries to catch his breath, stroking Mina's hair as he does. Shh, baby, give me a second here. He smiles weakly at you as he comforts her, and her cries start to fade. Out of the crowd, he sees Mina down by his side, shiny streaks down both of her cheeks. As you, as he does, you see he's clutching an assignment number on a crumpled piece of paper. Is Mina okay? She's good. We just had to rush up here. He puts his hand on her shoulder and she clings to his side. Esther, who usually takes her, is sick. <gasps> Am I gonna babysit? He stretches. I don't know. Uh, a noise sounds from the entrance, a klaxon, followed by a number, a list of numbers going lightly on a display screen. The crowd responds instantly, pushing and pulling as people try to wade to the entry point. 
Lim stops and turns back towards the crowd, then glances down at the crumpled paper. That's my number. Shit. Shit. Er, I mean, uh, he starts patting his pockets on his gear and then glances around. Go. I'll watch her. <gasps> Gonna become best friends with Mina. He blinks a little, staring. Th thank you. Thank you. I'll... He crouches to Mina. Are you gonna stay with our friend here, okay? They are gonna keep you safe, and... He stands back up. Here, take her bag. She shoves it into your hand. She's got food. She's got... Shit, I have to go. He backs away into the crowd. Mina, I'll be back real soon, okay? Be good. Then, Lim disappears into the roiling crowd, who are now trying to get into the shipyard before it locks down. Oh, look at her. She's just a little baby. Mina stands staring, suddenly small without Lim at her side. She fixes you with a dark-eyed look you can't quite read. Hey, Mina. She holds the stare, unmoving. The two parallel tear tracks still glint on her cheeks. Are you okay, Mina? She sniffs at look down and looks down. I look in the bag. You unlatch the top of the bag and see a few metal containers fashioned from scrap components. A battered slate sits on top, blinking in the low battery warning, and tucked beside it is a ragged rabbit hand sewn. Take the rabbit. You pull the rabbit out of the bag, its long limbs waddling, waggling as you do. <laughs> Mina goes to jump and grabs it, but holds herself back. She stands and hugs herself, eyeing the rabbit. Well, I give her the rabbit. You hold the rabbit out and Mina statches it from your hand. She hugs it tightly without looking away from you. Bun bun, she says, <gasps> staring you down ferocious despite her size. Hi, bun bun. You move a little closer as you speak, closing the gap. He doesn't speak, she says. She looks at you suspiciously. Her face softens a little. She waggles Bun Bun in front of you and then walks him into your arm, up your arm and onto your shoulder where he sits. This is giving me such big Newt from Aliens vibe. She pokes your arm a couple of times. Are you really a robot? Uh, s sorta. Yeah, she thinks, me too. Mina has more questions, lots of questions. Questions about how you breathe or if you rust. But before long, you're talking about rabbits and, wh whether es and what Esther, the lady who usually takes her, smells like. <laughs> and whether or not fairies live in the ice heating pipes. You pass the time like this, sitting side by side on the floor of the walkway as others pass. Sometimes talking, sometimes drawing on the slate, sometimes playing with Bun Bun the rabbit. And this is how Lem finds you, just as both of you are starting to yawn. How- wait, how long were we sitting here? How long were we sitting here? Wait, I kind of assumed we'd go back to my apartment, but man, I guess it wasn't a very long shift. I- Nicholas, I'm also still mad about Alien 3 still. I'll never not be mad about Alien 3 and the travesty that Alien 3 wrought upon the franchise. And this is how Lem finds you. He's dirty and tired, but Mina leaps up his legs and into his arms as he stumbles backwards. You two get on okay? He asks, trying to keep Mina from climbing onto his shoulders. More than okay. We're best friends now. Mina shoots you a smile from Lem's arms, her suspicion gone. Well, well, well. Looks like Meanie can be nice. Aw. He calls Mina Meanie? <laughs> he pokes her in the rib and she squeals with delight. Thank you, friend. I mean it. He gives you a warm, wide smile. I owe you. Look, he glances around. It seems like Esther, the lady who usually watches her, is going to be out for a spell. If you ever have some time, I'd really appreciate you coming down to our place in the low end. He grins sheepishly. If you have time. But now I have to take this one to eat. He plays at biting Mina and she giggles in response. Oh, it's so cute. See ya, sleeper. He waves and they stumble off down the corridor, drawing gazes from passing spacers as Mina's laughter echoes down the corridor in bright squeals. Uh, I can't wait to babysit Mina. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be a good aunt. Sidereal fit up. Oh, okay, so that's just the, the one remaining, one remaining option there. Okay. I guess I could, I guess this is suggesting I could... If I fill this one up, I'll have more chances, maybe? Oh, we'll see. I don't think I have anything else that's ticking down. And I'm saving that point for something, but I don't remember what. Hmm. Just gonna hop right in and get rid of that bot. Just gonna hop right in and get rid of that bot. No, not the gift of sub button. There we go. Get out of here. Yeah, get out of here. Nice try, fool. Alright. There's only room for one sponsorship on this stream. Oh, I can go to their apartment. 
Oh, I love this. Lim can't work shifts in the shipyard unless someone watches Mina. You two seemed to get along last time, and Lim is desperate. Um, unless Lim gets time in the shipyard, he won't qualify for the sidereal crew lottery. Oh, okay. Well, that's great. All right. I don't have to work. I can just, I can look after Mina. Well, I guess I'll, I'm going to do, do I want to take my medicine now and take care of, oh no, you know what I want to do? Oh no, I do have the karma thing. Okay, never mind. I wanted to make sure I had insta karma before I did the highly dangerous time sensitive hacking thing. But I guess I should, I should really focus on that. Because the timer is ticking down on this hunter coming for me. Yeah, all right, let's take our medicine and we're gonna, we're gonna dive right into it. Bye, anxious topiary. Movie night with your parents, that's incredibly adorable. If you're still there, you should tell us what movie you're watching. Okay, let's end this cycle. Oh, I should eat, I gotta eat. Ooh, I gotta eat before I go. Uh, so those rations aren't there anymore. I don't have any dice. I have to buy some food. I put my money on the table. Which I think means I have to go to the hub. I think every all of my other food options are currently closed. Yeah, we gotta go to the hub. Or actually I think I can I could go to the garden and pay. I would rather do that. Let's get some fresh food. We deserve it. I was really curious if the produce that came in the HelloFresh thing was going to be fresh. And I was presently, pleasantly surprised. Uh, although that said, I think if I hadn't done the meal with the salad immediately, I don't know how long the salad would have lasted. But that's the salad issue, I guess. Yes, barter for food. Don't mind if I do. Definitely not Alien 3, good. The spy who never dies, okay. Okay. All right, that only gets me two ticks, which is annoying. All right, now we can sleep. There we go. Salad problems. <laughs> that feels like, if that is not a phrase that res refers to something, it probably should be, because it's very catchy. Ah, uh, like, ah, uh, that's a real salad problem. You know what I mean? Uh, maybe I'm thinking of the phrase champagne problem. Oh. It's Bliss's assist assistant, Moritz. Hey, a quiet voice greets you as you leave. Sleeper, it's me. Do I know you? Moritz, I work for Bliss. He rubs the back of his head. You are not an easy person to find. I don't really have an address. <laughs> Moritz holds up his hands. Hey, no judgment. It's cool. You both stand there for a moment, each waiting for the other to speak. What's up? Uh, yeah, well, Bliss needs you. A job just came in, a real big one. She's asking for you to come up and help her up. Okay, soon. Soon, he repeats it back to himself. Look, Bliss said, I've got to get to... Said, I've got to get you right now, so you know... Now is better than soon. Moritz stands there for a little while, unsure if the message is delivered. Yeah, I got it. Cool, 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 he looks around. Bliss just likes me to do a thorough job, you know. He rubs his hands together before burying them in his jacket pockets. Moritz, what's your deal? What's your vibe? Here. See ya, sleeper. Moritz ambles off down the corridor, kicking at a filter cap on his way out. Time to head to Biss's Bay, then. Bliss's Bliss's Bay also sounds like sounds like you know uh, a a highfalutin romance novel euphemism. All right, how many ticks is this? Bliss has an idea: a full system flush with the tracer fluid to reveal the leaks, which means an emergency venting of all tanks. Brilliant, dangerous. I think I'm gonna. Go for it. Because I got a plus one in this. Ember's wake contract. Somehow Bliss swung a tanker contract, but the catch is that the work needs to be turned around fast. Too fast. So we got to seal the leaks. 
and that'll tick this up, I guess. Tanker's crew have detected a set of leaks, and they need to isolate and seal them as soon as possible. That's where I come in. Yeah, that's three cycles is... It's a tough one. That's a tight one. Oh, I didn't mean... Hold on. Oh, no, that is the dice I meant to use. Hold on. I was like, that. not the six! Not the six! But it's fine. All right, so we're halfway there, but that's the only time we can do that. Uh, all right, I'm going to spend one cycle not doing the hacking, doing other stuff. Because uh, I would love to get my return on investment on this one. Because this way I can babysit, too. I can babysit a little. Oh, one short. That's so annoying. Ah! Inspect the vast featureless space of the tranker is mentally and physically exhausting. You don't find a single leak. Well, damn. Damn, that's annoying. Uh, let me get, um, yeah, let me get a hash brown and a small hot coffee and uh, some of those mushrooms. Yeah, there we go. There we go. God, what a... What a way to spend all my dice. <gasps> oh, I forgot Emphis was ready for me. I shouldn't have eaten. Ugh. Well, I can't go with a mostly full stomach. And I'll just have to wait. And I'll just have to wait. For now, we'll babysit Mina. Hey, Mina. By the end of the day, Mina curls up in your lap as you read her st a story. She's asleep when Lim gets back, and you two eat together. Oh, that's so nice! It really does take a village of robots to raise a child. Okay. Yeah, it gives me energy too, because we ate. It's nice. I think the next... I would love to get the self-repair option. So the next time... Remind me the next time I have a point to spend. Oh, there's active scenes. Oh, I have to do the... Ah, oh, this is so annoying. I have to do the emphasis scene. It won't let me move on without it. What a waste of all my food money. Uh, um, Emphis is preparing the Matsutake caps. He cleans them carefully with a damp cloth before shaking shaving the stalks as if he was sharpening a pencil. His knife slides through them, revealing the bright white flesh within. These are good, sleeper. Very good, he says without looking up. I bartered with Mingi for some kelp, too, so we can brew the dashi. You know Mingi? Emphasis looks up from cutting with a smile. Everyone knows Mingi. Emphasis slides the sliced Mitsutake mushrooms to one side and takes out a closed pan. This is gonna be me in about, uh... 10 minutes. He opens a lid and you see the green wafer of kelp sitting in a ba bath of water. Been soaking it since last cycle, Emphis explains. Should be good to warm now. He places a pan on a burner and turns it on low. We have some time now. He wipes his hands clean and throws the cloth over his shoulder. However, there's one difference this cycle, he smiles. You have been the one providing the ingredients, so it's my turn to provide a story. Okay, yeah, hell yeah. Good. This story is important to me. He gestures for you to sit, both sit on the folded stools behind the stall. You see these? Emphis runs his hands over his forearms, tracing the circular scars that mark them like perfect bite marks. <gasps> Cannibals? Conway called it an anchored interface rig, a mechanical control device for piloting a heavy-duty extraction suit in low-G industrial operations. We call it a bone suit. <laughs> he points to a pattern of larger circles on his shoulder. They drill in and anchor it here, then all the way down your arm. Jesus. He taps each scar on the way. It maps mechanical movements to the suit exactly. A one-to-one -one mechanical replication. You swing your arm, a two-ton sw arm swings too. You should have seen the recruitment vids. Strong people and even stronger suits st tearing through stone and scrap. Superheroes. Half my graduating year signed up, from company school to company shuttle. Conway from birth to death. He stares off in the distance for a moment, fighting with the memories. 
We need a bones emote for teeth. That makes a lot of sense, actually. Bones, bones, bones. It's not a uh, pretty good idea. Actually, yeah, I guess we don't have one. We've got teeth and hands and holes, but no bones. And that's a terrible setup for a human body. The bone suits weren't good. The rate of failures were high, was high, and failures meant arms torn off, anchors torn out, broken bones. Bad stuff. So after a while, Conway discontinued them. No longer competitive, they said. He checks the broth, turns down the heat, and adding the mushrooms. So there we were, hundreds of us with surgical alterations for suits that didn't work. They sent us home, back to the company colony that spat us out, to be cleaners, drivers, cooks. They gave us drugs for the pain and told us to make something of ourselves. When I deserted, bribing some passing spacers to take me into orbit, there were only me and a couple others left. The rest just faded away. Arthritis, osteoporosis, they folded in on themselves like paper lanterns. That was my generation. The anchor points still ache, still burn, he touches the scars. But what burns worse is the betrayal. I've been on the eye a long time now, but that will never fade. Not that, and not the faces of my friends. Emphis reaches over and sprinkles a handful of leaves into the broth. It's ready. Thank you. Thank you for listening to me. I'll not let their story die. As long as I'm the one telling it, it will remain. Emphis pours the broth into a double-walled metal bowl and hands it to you. The heat radiates through your hands, and the smell drifts up, rich and sharp like a pine forest after the rain. You drink the broth slowly, chewing the mitsutake and thinking. Emphis busies himself with cleaning the pans and the bowl, sealing the kelp back up for another day. Then he quietly comes to sit with you while you finish your meal. Neither of you speak, preferring instead to let the story linger in the air a little bit longer. It is not that there is nothing to say. It is that sometimes, in the moments after something, speaking breaks the spell. So you both idle, eager to be in each other's company, Emphis taking longer over his cleaning, his packing, and you savoring the final dregs of broth. When you finally finish and hand him the bowl, you feel the spell break, and the story leaves you both. And as you leave, you know that both of you are somehow a little more empty and a little bit more full than before. Oh, I just had like two Thanksgivings, basically. I'm so full. That was too much. It was too much food. I feel so bad wasting that broth. <laughs> Symbolically. Ugh. Ooh, and, but now I have this self-repair perk. I don't have any scrap. So it's not very useful, but okay. A hole of hands and teeth is the next Dimension 20 season. <laughs> um, nice nail, what it would take for me to be on Dimension 20, I think, is for me to go to LA, <laughs> which is where all of the Dimension 20 people are. Okay. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Gotta feed the cat. Uh, all right, let's finish off the bliss tick. Uh, it was so much food you gave me the ability to self-heal. I wish food did that. That's some Encanto. That's some Encanto shit. Um... I guess I'll do, I only have one tick left, so let's just go ahead and do. Is American Ninja Warrior still going? I don't think that, I don't think that's extant anymore. As you both wait in the airlock for it to cycle back to the bay, Bliss thumps you on the arm. Nicely done, sleeper, we cleared out the contractor, no problem. She became a little bit of an astroblub. <laughs> she stretches. Once we're back in the bay, we can check in the payments, come through, and divide it up. She stretches. Feels good. The airlock clunks and the lights flicker, and a moment later, you're back in the bay where Moritz is at the racks, trying to figure out where the mess of tools Bliss left in her wake should be hung. Hey, Moritz. Moritz looks over his shoulder. Sleeper. He spins her wrench in his hand. Looked like clean work out there. He nods respectfully. You look over at Bliss, who is already gliding over to the management console. She twirls a bit... Uh, she twirls a little as she crosses the cavernous bay. No wonder, no one you've ever met moves as well as Zero, zero G as she does. It's like she was born into it. Shit. 
Bliss slams a fist into the console. Shit, shit, shit. Uh, what's up? I can't even... Bliss closes her eyes. Come on, come here. She calls you over. Look at this. Just look. She spins the terminal screen, and you see the details of the Bay's account. You see an entry for the Ember's Wake, a repair fee paid in full the moment you finished up the job. But then directly after, the whole amount was transferred back into an unknown account. <gasps> We've been scammed? Bliss! What the hell? This is the work of my ex, she punches the terminal. He must have coded a back door into the machine before he left, she rubs her forehead. There's no way we can... She pauses, thinking, Moritz, throw me the wrench. You, you gonna fix it? Moritz spins the wrench across the bay. B Bliss smiles. Something like that. Bliss brings the wrench down on the terminal, hard. You flinch black backwards in a hail of computer parts spilling up into the bay in a glittering arc, fragments of a screen memory sections of the casing. When Bliss is done, she clips the wrench to her tool belt. Try backdooring your way into that, you shit. All right, kind of an astro vibe. Moritz drifts out from his hiding place amongst the racks. Bliss, he says tentatively, you want me to... He looks at the arc of fragments drifting around the bay nervously. Bliss shakes her head. No, I've got it. You go get me a new terminal, cheapest you can find. Compile one together from pieces at the Ord Exchange if you have to. Bliss. She looks over at you. I'm good, I'm good now. Okay, but where's my fucking money? She glides over to a panel by the wall. Don't worry, one of the first things I installed when we spec'd out this place was a cleaning sweep. She flicks over the plastic cover on the huge... Uh, she flicks over, I'm gonna assume open, she flicks open a plastic cover on a huge red button. Watch yourself. She hammers the button, boom, and a row of laser emitters unfold from the bay wall. They start crawling their way across the work area, frying the debris as they do in pulses of burning light. Bliss smiles. It's that or just space the whole bay every few cycles. Okay, you okay? Not really, she stares at the sweet panel. Just doesn't seem to be able to extract myself from the shit, no matter how hard I try. The clean sweepings buzzes and crackles as it works away its way across the bay. That's that account wasn't everything. I'm not that stupid. Once Moritz gets back, I'll secure it and flush everything else. She flicks a nearby piece of debris into the path of the sweep. Clean break. And then we take another contract. That's it. She shuts off the sweep as it reaches the near end of the bay. You don't want the cryo back? Oh, I want it. But it's gone. He could have transferred it anywhere. She looks out across the hub. And even if I knew where he was, the last thing I want is to ever see him again. She rubs her forehead. I'm sorry, sleeper. I know you worked for this too. But next time won't be the same. It fucking better not be. She looks away. See you in a few cycles. Moritz will let you know. She kicks off into the bay to finish cleaning up. Well, that was a fucking bust. Ah. I'm so annoyed. All right, how much? How much is more pills? Sixty-four. All right, so I'm a, I'm a little short. I'm a little short. What can I do to get some money? With a five and a six, what can I do to get money? Or I could try to get some scrap and try to repair myself on my own. That actually might be the best option. Uh, I can buy some scrap. Yeah, let's... Tr God, it's so expensive though. And I really don't know at rate what rate it's going to heal me. But let's try it. You know what? Let's just try it. Uh, and God, what things do I... I have a thing that might get me random scrap. Engineer. Okay. Let's try to find some engineer options that'll pay. I mean, I could always sell my ship mine. That's not a bad option. What are you? What's your check? Interface? Not good enough. Uh, not a ton of options. Yeah, you want other stuff. Man, yeah, just not a lot of sh not a lot of scrap options. Huh. That's the second time that Mangosteen quote has come up recently. Uh, and not that, that it shouldn't. 
Not that it isn't true and shouldn't be remembered. Uh, it's just surprising. All right, you're ticking up. Uh, interface, intuition. Yeah, just not a lot of engineering options open to me right now. Hmm. Oh, okay. So I have to, if I increase my endure, I'll be able to gather scrap there. So I just need one point. Well, it's gonna be it's gonna be a minute till I can get that point. Ugh. Um, God, this is so annoying. I'm so good at engineering and there's so few engineering options. The lounge only has food. Ugh. Well, let me watch the kid for a bit. Oh, I got some energy from that. Mina leads you to a winding tour of the block, chatting to neighbors and collecting snacks. For a while, you forget about everything else. That's extremely sweet. Tab Atkins, thank you for re-upping your subscription for another, another month. Uh, uh, let's play the Ord Exchange. Alright. Got me some money. That's not so bad. And I guess... It's an interface option. How about you? You got engineering options? No. You want things. Urgh. I guess I can work, in, work on opening this tick. Mm. Hey, Madzalu, I'm sorry to hear you're sick. God, it takes us, this is gonna take forever to tick up. Ugh. Let's, uh... Oh, right, I can do the still! I forgot about the still! I forgot about the still. Okay, the still... If I keep working on the still, I should get scrap as I'm, as I'm installing it. Okay, we can do the still. All right, okay. Uh, I'm worried about the thing thing, too. I'm hoping... I'm, I'm curious to see how much one scrap fulfills me. I think it's probably just gonna be, like, one tick. Yeah, one condition, huh? That's rough. That's rough! You found a piping tick in your guacamole? Ugh. Ugh. Okay. Um, let me feed the cat. I think we're gonna... I think now is the time to start the Feng quest. Well, no. Here's what time it is. It's time to cook. It's time to cook. That's what I'm deciding. Uh, I'm gonna close the game entirely. And let's do a little bit of cooking. I don't need my headphones for this, but anytime I stream without headphones, I feel weird about it. I just feel like, I just feel disconnected. Even though I can't hear your voices, There, there's just something weird to me about streaming without the headphones on. And anytime I've done it, it has made me feel weird. Back when I did Blender streams and didn't have music. <laughs> it just, I just, it's such a weird psychological thing. I don't know. It's a weird one. All right, hold on. Let me go get my ingredients from the fridge. <laughs> we are cooking at the computer, yeah. This is how it's gonna go. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, so just as a reminder, if you're interested in trying out Hello Kitchen for yourself, you can use my link. 
Uh, or go to HelloFresh.com and use the code that is on the screen in the bottom corner. It's also in my panels if you scroll down. Um, if, you, if you're doing this, if you're signing up and you're not on stream, um, you can find it there. But it's P-O-G-H-F-224-71 for 21 free meals plus free shipping. Uh, do I need to open a, a window with a cooking stove? Is the gas a problem? It should be fine. You're not supposed to cook with propane inside, um, but this is mainly a butane gas canister, and you can cook with butane inside. Um, sadly, the fancy uh, fancy butane stove that I ordered did not come in. So um, what we've got here is the this is the chickpeas that I already washed and drained, and some onions that I already chopped up, so I wouldn't have to do that on screen. Uh, we've got the bag of spinach. Beautiful. This is another one where I'm like, I think the, the spinach actually looks really good. Spinach has a longer bag life, IMO. Um, no knife work. I mean, I do have my knife. Y'all want to see my knife? This is the knife I have in the office for when I need a knife for cooking. It's got lemons on it. I can't wait for to see how autofocus deals with this cooking stream. Um, yeah, so we've got, I've got, um, these are the chicken, chicken stock packets. I've got some sweet Italian chicken sausage mix. Very curious to try this out. I don't eat a lot of chicken sausage. I've got some tomato pas. And I've got, which I want to point out because I thought this was really funny. It's an Italian seasoning spice, but they, they labeled the bag so delicioso Italian. <laughs> <laughs> which I thought was really funny and really extra because it doesn't it doesn't ref like the it doesn't refer to this as the so delicioso Italian spice it just refers to it as Italian seasoning so that means somebody somebody within the company was like oh the so delicioso Italian seasoning but the people who made the 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 document that I'm going off of was like we're not calling it that <laughs> <laughs> Which I thought was just really funny. It feels like there's backstory there. Um, okay. So I've already did basically done the first step, which is dice the onions, drain the chickpeas. So let me set up my little stove. Got my little cooking, my, my strawberry hand, hand wash. I don't know. I got my cooking board. I have a surprising amount of um little cooking stuff for the office i don't ever cook here but sometimes uh it's, i mean it's just nice to have those things you know my shirt says uh <laughs> turn back to nowhere i don't know why i just thought it was really funny i got it second hand i don't know where it comes from or why it is this how many fruit themes utensils can we build up? As many as I can get my hands on. As many as I can legally purchase. So this is normally uh, my cooking stove for camping. Um, and it's nice. I love it. It's very handy. I'm curious to see. So this is the pot I'm going to use. I'm curious. I think it'll be fine. Yeah, I think it'll be fine. I was a little worried that the pot was going to be too big. But it should be okay. I am going to take off my headphones so I can hear the gas go. Hold on. I'm also hoping I have enough gas in this canister to cook. I, it should be fine. We'll see. There you go. Easy peasy. Now I'm putting my headphones back on to comfort me. I'm in an office. I have a legit office space. Um, Cause I'm a fancy lady. Okay, I've got my olive oil. <laughs> I thought about trying to do this at home, but I don't have um, a sufficient internet connection at home right now. So I was like, well, This will be easier. The, this mini stove is surprisingly useful. I, I normally when I'm camping, I eat a lot of like oatmeal and uh, I've got a little AeroPress camping coffee kit. <laughs> and so when I'm camping, I always have really, really nice coffee. Um, and this thing, it, it, I mean, it'll, it'll take it straight up to boiling. 
It'll take. <laughs> All right. Maybe this was a bad idea. Uh, see, I was worried that the pot was going to be too big. I think it'll be okay. You need me to not commit arson today? I can't make any promises. Uh, the, yeah, the moment this feels unsafe to me, I will stop. Uh, even if that means the, the soup is half undone. That'll just have to be how it is. There is a fire extinguisher nearby, actually. Shockingly. So I've got onions. I don't think I'm going to use the full onion. Oh, they want me to do the sausage first. It's hard to stand and do this. This might have been too ambitious. I knew this was going to be ambitious. I'm worried this is going to be too ambitious. All right. This pot should be big enough. This is only, it's only supposed to be two, uh, two servings worth of soup. So I think it'll be okay. I can already hear it sizzling. That was the worst way to get sausage out of a container, but it's done. And I'm going to have to take the trash out. I'm just realizing. <laughs> I'm going to have to take the trash out tonight before I leave the office. All right, that's cooking. That is cooking. It's supposed to be browned. Four to six minutes, okay. The only thing I don't like about this stove is that the actual uh, burner size, like where the actual heat hits, is pretty narrow relative to like a full site, like a legit burner. So I'm going to keep an eye on it, make sure that it doesn't, doesn't end up cooking just the middle bit. You can hear the sizzle. You can really hear the sizzle. That's kind of exciting. If you're just tuning in and wondering why we're doing this, it's because I've been sponsored by HelloFresh. <laughs> and you can find uh, a link in the chat if you type exclamation point HelloFresh. Um, you can also use go to HelloFresh and use my code, which is POGHF22471 for 20 fun free meals plus free shipping. I can't remember 
what we said POGHF stood for. Everybody had so many good, <laughs> good, relevant options. It's it's browning nicely. I've never made anything with chicken sausage before. Is does anybody know is it gets as like brown as pork sausage? I'm I'm curious if it gets if it's going to if if it's going to brown as brown <laughs> or if if it just needs to be like cooked. It does not get as brown. Okay, I didn't, that was my instinct, Ari, so I'm glad to get that confirmation. My instinct was is that most meats can be brown over heat if you wait long enough. Well, I'll probably not wait that long. <laughs> It smells really good. I regret that smell of vision is not an option for this stream or any stream yet. Why are we bothering with VR when we could have smell of vision? That's my question. It looked more or less like chicken, mostly white with browning. Okay. Okay. That's kind of what it looks like. It's it will not be possible for me to hold it up for you, but that is the ju the gist of it. Yeah, I just never I don't know. When I go to get sausages from the sh store and I see chicken sausage as an option, I'm never like, "Oh, chicken but ground so uh already we're uh, expanding the possibilities of my of my diet i haven't made any of the the fancier ones yet i haven't made the risotto yet i think i'm gonna make that tomorrow uh no i'm gonna get that saturday uh and i haven't made the the salmon either but i made the the chicken the pecan encrusted chicken it was great it was i was really shocked at how good it was it was also like the nicest meal I've made for myself in a while because it like there was like the chicken and there was like a little side salad and I put it on a, on a beautiful plate and I sat down and I ate it with like a knife and fork like a real adult <laughs> and that was a nice feeling it was a nice feeling to feel fancy This is fully cooked, so I'm gonna add some onions. I, the recipe just says add the whole onion, but this is so much onion, I think I'm gonna add like half. I don't think I'm gonna add all of it. That feels like a lot. And I'm gonna add a little bit more olive oil. Made a little fart noise at me. It's very rude. I should have saved the Naomi Shihab Nye, the traveling onion poem for this stream. That would have been a smarter choice. Okay, so that just needs to soften four to five minutes and then we add tomato paste and half the Italian seasoning. Does anybody know, uh, this is, here's the thing I like about doing cooking streams is I get to just ask <laughs> you guys when I have questions about cooking and that is, I, whenever I see recipes like this where you stir in the tomato paste, it, it tells you to continue stirring and cooking for like 30 seconds. Is that actually important or is that just like, does that cook, is that cooking actually doing anything for the tomato paste or is it just, is it just like a matter of mixing it? 
just when it looks stirred enough okay okay thickening okay kind of like kind of like a broth kind of situation okay It smells so good. It smells good in the way that only it's supposed to toast a bit to bloom the flavor. Interesting. If it's contemplated paste, it also makes it taste less raw. Okay. This is great. Y'all know so much about cooking. I should do more cooking streams. I want to find a way this summer to do camping streams. And doing camping cooking stream would be just an awful lot of fun. All right, I'm cracking open this tomato paste. So delicioso. Camp stream would be hard with internet. Well, that's what I need to figure out is the thing. I think it would be cool uh, to get a hotspot. I don't know if a hotspot would be strong enough to stream really. Yeah, see Mechtel, there, I know people do it. I know people successfully do it. Whether I could successfully do it is another question. Whoop. Turn the heat down a little bit. It's starting to bubble, bubble and boil. Some libraries have rentable hotspots. Yes, I've used those hotspots and they're perfectly good, but they're probably not good enough to do streams. I would probably have to buy one. Yeah, camping might be a, a KOA might be an option. The, the other tricky part is like how to do that and stay safe. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like how to be, how to do that and be camping and still be safe is another thing where I'm like, well, that'll take that. I'll have to figure that out a little bit. Time for the paste. I'm only supposed to use half. Oh. Smells good. Definitely a lot of like basil and oregano and thyme. Okay. All right, let that cook. Stir in two and a half cups water, stock concentrate, chickpeas, and salt. <gasps> Do I have salt? <laughs> um, fuck. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> that would be such a tragic thing to lack. All right, I'm gonna add the rest of this and then I'm gonna go searching for salt. <laughs> yeah, salt real important. It's real, real, real important. <laughs> what a thing to have forgotten. This never happens to Julia Child.
This pot is gonna have plenty of room, but I'm gonna level with you. I think this is more than two <laughs> servings worth of soup. Even for like a soup entree, this is a lot of soup. Okay. The chicken stock looks, it's a concentrated chicken stock, but it looks so much like caramel and it feels like it's a trap. It feels like a trap. Hey, green tea, get you. I can't believe I remembered everything but fucking salt. Salt? You kidding me? Okay. I've got mustard, I've got ketchup, I've got soy sauce. Soy sauce, you're not, you're not right. Or you're not wrong, sorry. <laughs> you're not wrong, soy sauce might be a good option. Okay, so at this point, cover, bring to a boil, reduce heat to medium, simmer, covered seven minutes. Okay. Uh, once that's simmered, uncover, stir in spinach, season with more salt and pepper. I also didn't bring pepper. Okay, hold on. I have an idea. I could not tell you why, but there is a fucking ancient container of Morton salt. <laughs> I don't think salt goes bad, right? It's probably fine. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah, it's a rock. Yeah, it's a mineral. I'm saying, okay. All right. I just wanted to, I wanted to sanity check that. <laughs> uh, it didn't stick together either, so. Okay. Cover, bring to a boil, reduce to medium, and simmer. All right, easy. I know a watch pot never boils, but that has never stopped me. I am making a one pot chicken sausage and chickpea soup from HelloFresh. And you can find a link to that in the chat periodically, <laughs> or if you uh, type exclamation point HelloFresh, um, or go to HelloFresh.com and use my code POGHF22471 for 21 free meals plus free shipping. Mm. I also brought uh, some of the focaccia, the rosemary focaccia um, that I placed an order for last Thursday. So I'll have that on the side. You pretty sure you've made this one and it was a tasty? Good. I mean, it feels hard to go wrong. It's got a sausage and chickpeas and soup fixins. 
<laughs> I mean, it feels pretty straightforward, right? I can hear it. It's not quite bubbling, but it's, it's strong. It's going strong. I'm going to do it one take up higher. Yeah, so straightforward. Bring it to a boil, reduce heat to medium, cover, simmer seven minutes. Once it's simmered, uncover. Oh, I don't know. I don't think I brought something to put the soup on. You can't recommend the spy who cannot die? Anxious Topiary, I'm shocked. With a name like that. Once soup has simmered, uncover pot and stir in spinach. This is how I cook, especially if I'm using a recipe, as I just obsessively reread the recipe while I wait for things to cook. <laughs> it sounds like a James Bond movie, but I don't think it is, right? That's not a James Bond movie. I can't, I just, just let it cook. Just let it cook. Stop fussing with it. But I want to fuss with it. I'm not fussing with it. I'm being responsible. Yeah, Mozart Goats, that's the thing. Is like I read it, but it takes me it takes me a couple turns to for it to cycle through. Oh, we're a little bad. Thank you for the gifts up to Green Tikachu. I, I didn't see that. I was too busy cooking. You bailed? <laughs> wow. You bailed on your parents? God. Murphia, thank you for the raid. Welcome. Welcome, raiders. I am going to peek. I'm going to peek. I'm reporting in to say it smells very good and that it's looking good. It's getting bubblier. It's not quite a boil, but it's getting bubblier. <laughs> what game was Whoa My God gave me a gun from? Oh, Sinalis is so good. Uh, has anybody, has anybody played that new one that came out? <laughs> Does not seem like a good quote for this. <laughs> um, what is it? Hi-Fi, Hi-Fi Rush? The one that just came out? I've been hearing such good things about it. Think it's a good sign it means you're just gonna eat it just fine? Okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no beef in the cult. I mean, there's no beef in the soup either, so I think that's actually pretty on point. I think that's actually pretty okay, right? <laughs> yeah, okay, it had to have been in Cult of the Lamb. Yeah, good good investigation. Good um good research there on that one. <laughs> not going to reread the instructions. You can't stand rhythm games? I've heard that the music in the game is not great, which is funny for a rhythm game. But uh, I'm fine with that, actually. I Very rarely when I play rhythm games is it that I'm into the music. I'm just, I'm into the gameplay. That's the thing. Chicken with snake legs. Chicken with snake legs. <laughs> I'm glad Snack came out with something. <laughs> it's 
Get in there. Uh, I'm like, do I want to play more game while this is happening? But that's also a trap. That is a trap thing to do. If I started off the game, I would get distracted. Oh God, it's really hard to get distracted um, when the thing that you're making is just literally right here. It would be hard. A good way to burn soup. <laughs> I feel like you have to work really hard to burn soup. You have to be gone hours to burn soup. <laughs> can you? Can I introduce you to the plushies? Oh, what happened at Mechtil? Please don't. <laughs> don't. It would be funny, but I, I, I worry actually dangerous. <laughs> um, God, the plushies. Uh, the kitty is one that I got from Target. I think I got from Target uh, for Halloween, um, which I'm very fond of. The uh, top one is a Mothman plushie, which is very cute. Um, uh, it's got cute little feetsies. And the other one is just a big bee. I think the bee is from um, Hive Mill. The, it's a comic. It's a comic vendor. Mothman, where did I get the moth? It was a Kickstarter. <laughs> It was a Kickstarter, and I still yes, of course I still have my little egg, who probably should be should be the mascot for a cooking stream. The white thing on the desk is my toaster. I put the bread on top of it so I could remember in case I wanted to, to toast it. There we go. Yeah, this, this plushie was the inspiration for the egg, <laughs> egg emote. The egg emote came first, though, and then I finally picked up um, an egg plushie. Yeah, 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 yeah. So cute. Wow. Squashmallows has been crushing it. I always see the Squashmallow that's like um, a um, plague doctor, little plague doctor plushie. And I think it's so cute. And it feels like something would be very cute. Can I say a few words for Blumpkin? <laughs> Blumpkin lives in my heart forever. I was just looking at pictures of, of that pumpkin earlier today because I was sorting through my pictures on my desktop. And I was like, man, what a good pumpkin. What a good pumpkin. Once the HelloFresh sponsorship has passed, we'll be back to the pumpkin animation for all gift subs. So I'm pretty excited about that one. I do not have a P.O. box. I've been thinking about getting one temporarily for me and Burnt Cookbook Party to split um, so that people can send us stuff if they want to send us stuff. But it um, just haven't gotten around to it yet. Pretty low pry. I want a jellyfish plush so bad because jellyfish are one of my special interests, but most jellyfish plushes are octopuses with fewer tentacles. Oh, no. Oh, it's a squishable. I didn't realize they were completing competing companies. So Squishable and Squishmallow are different companies. Okay. That makes sense. That makes sense. And yet, I wouldn't have not expected. Uh, they, all, they all just look like cute, soft little plush things to me. getting there i can see it approaching the boil threshold but it's not there yet i want it there now yep just gotta cook this is the downside of a cooking stream it's just sort of gotta ron what are you cooking what kind of meal are you guys got i feel like if i had a live-in partner this, the HelloFresh thing would be especially good. I mean, it's still pretty nice. I ate the leftovers from the, <laughs> from the pecan chicken <laughs> that I made. I had the leftovers the next day, and that uh, ruled, actually. It was so nice to have that leftover salad and leftover chicken and feel good that I had made it. Uh, and, I mean, this soup is going to feed me for, like, three days. I have no doubt. What's today? Thursday? Yeah. Yeah. I'll have it for lunch tomorrow. And probably if there's leftovers on Saturday. The rosemary fig pork tenderloin. Ooh. That one sounds really good. How is the fig incorporated? Is it is it like a jam? 
like a fig jam? Uh, or are they actual figs that you're like chopping up and putting in? Red Thai curry noodle soup. That's so good. Sometimes there's just a lovely vibe while letting soup simmer. Yeah, that's true. That's part of the nice. Fig jam based pan sauce. That sounds so good. That sounds really good. Dustbag, thank you for the resubscribe. I also love fresh figs. They come and go so quickly. Feels like you really got to jump on them when you see them in the grocery store. And I don't see them often in the grocery store. Maybe if I'm like at, at Italy in New York. Italy feels like it always has figs. They must get them from Italy. I can't imagine where else. Routini with lots of peppers and spice and chicken. Oh, God, I'm hungry. I'm getting hungry. This thing needs to boil so I can eat soon. Fig leaf as an addition to tea is something I'm not familiar with. Does it taste like fig? Does the fig leaf give tea a fig flavor? That sounds incredible. Tastes adjacent to fig. <laughs> but like leaf. Okay. Okay, like a like a a green vegetal fig maybe. Interesting. I don't often have my hands on fig leaves. The in, in much the same way I don't often have my hands on figs. So that would be tricky. Oh, hot cocoa also sounds good. I've had a lot of hot cocoa recently. Cause it's winter. It's the best time to have hot cocoa. Ooh. It's making a sound. <laughs> it's not a boil sound, but it's close. <laughs> I do have some beautiful fig jam in the fridge for cheese plates. For cheese plates that I make myself, not purchased from HelloFresh. Figs with crumbled blue cheese on top on some sliced baguette. Oh, oh God, that sounds good. But also hard to eat. I love things on baguettes, but you have to have like the right baguette. You don't have like a good, you don't have a good baguette that's going to like yield to your teeth. Then trying to put stuff on baguettes just feels like so frustrating. I had such a good baguette place in New York. I'm so sad that I don't get to go, go and get baguettes there anymore. I should find a new baguette place. There's got to be some place near me. I've got to find a new baguette place. It's got to be fresh. Yeah, it's got to be real fresh. Uh, I always like doing, um, over the summer when it's radish season, getting some baguettes uh, and some really, really nice butter, like some nice butter. Uh, and you spread the baguettes with the butter and a little bit of salt and then you layer on usually like the sliced radishes like a french breakfast radish and like some arugula and it's like an open open faced radish sandwich oh, oh so good so good so simple so beautiful so sharp with the radishes you had to have come you had to have come uh, this was a cooking stream. You had to have known. Don't come to a cooking stream hungry or without snacks. Ah, find a new baguette source. Pitbull's sister? Croissant place. They were disappointed in their baguettes. That sucks. What was bad about the baguettes? There was one vegan place. Uh, I mean, there's lots of vegan places, but there was one French vegan bakery in New York that I would go to sometimes because they had very good food. Um, and every once in a while I would try one of their baguettes and they were always terrible. Even when I knew they were freshly baked baguettes, they tasted stale and their crust was so hard. It was so disappointing because so much of the rest of their food was so good. And it was just like the baguette, the baguette, the baguette you fail on. 
that's like the thing. That's like the thing you got to get right as a French bakery. Ugh. Uh, oh, I got um, rosemary focaccia. Baguettes are normally vegan, right? Yeah, I think they are. It, they was a, a an entirely vegan bakery. Uh, their their baguettes were not especially vegan. Like that was not the selling point. It, this just so frustrating, so frustrating. If yeast is vegan, well, that's a question. That is a question. Arguably, it's the most living thing that I consume, or it's a thing that I consume while it is most alive. <laughs> Maybe yogurt. Maybe yogurt more so. The rest is water, flour, salt. You know vegans who eat nutritional yeast? Yeah, I do too, actually. You can, yeast must be fine. I'm glad yeast is fine. I would feel bad if vegans weren't eating, weren't eating bread out there. Yeah, there's genuinely no reason. Like, there were... The, the vegan place had pastries that were, like, normally very butter-heavy. Like, I had their croissants, and I had, like, some of their um, spiral pastries, which are normally butter-heavy pastries, and they were fine. They were excellent. They were as good or better than most other pastries you would get at a non-vegan place. So the fact that they biffed the baguettes was just so frustrating. Every once in a while, I would go in and be like, surely the baguettes will be good today. Surely I just got a bad batch last time. But no. Nope. No. Nope. Never. Never. It bubbling. It bubbling. It getting there. <sighs> Grilled cheese with potato bread with kimchi on it. I've never had a kimchi, kimchi grilled cheese, but that sounds like it would be really good. I've had a lot of other kimchi dishes. I love a kimchi uh, noodle, like a ramen style noodle. You can get some of those or kimchi. And, uh, with a just slap slap a, a thing of American cheese down on top. Ooh. Ooh, it makes it so creamy. It makes it so rich. I guess do you you probably have to like chop the kimchi up, right? And then just layer it in between. God, that sounds good. God, I'm getting hungry. I am getting hungry though. I am getting hungry though for real. I'll put kimchi on anything I can. <laughs> What's wrong? I love American cheese. I'm an American cheese apologist. You just never get anything as beautiful and um, pulley, like that stringy, you get that stretch on. That's good. American cheese undervalued. It's the only good melting cheese. Yeah. I mean, there's some good, I mean, there's some good like um, Chihuahua cheese that, that can melt pretty nicely too. A raclette, that melts nicely. And American cheese is our version, so why not? Yes, yes, yeah. On an egg sandwich, perfect, perfection. On a on a, a hamburger, do you want that good melt? It's got to be American cheese. Yes, yes, Mime Town, exactly. There's a time and a place. It's not everywhere. If I saw a, a, a charcuterie board, I had fig jam and some beautiful rye crackers and then some slabs of American cheese, that wouldn't be right. But then if I went and had a grilled cheese sandwich and it was just full of like unmelted, what, mimolette, that's not going to be, that's not going to get the job done. That's not going to do it for me. It's not, it's not right. It's not right. You think you can change everything in a, mag, uh, a grilled cheese, but it has to have American cheese. It can have other cheese too, if you want to fancy it up. But it's got to have that American cheese. It's got to have that melt. American cheese ruins what's ever it on. Inferior to its cheeseless form. Disagree, but I respect it. Green Tea, could you tell us about this pun? Tell us about this pun so noteworthy it has stuck with you.
grilled cheese with pimento cheese. That sounds amazing. I'm curious if I could do like a port wine grilled cheese. That seems, <laughs> that seems wrong. <laughs> I don't know if I think spreadable cheese is the right thing for a grilled cheese. We got boil. We got boil. Okay. Now we just gotta let it simmer a little bit. It's probably simmered enough, honestly. I think if I had if I had kicked up the heat significantly higher, it would have boiled faster. But I think everything in it is probably fully cooked at this point. I was telling a friend about how I was back home for holidays and someone who was not great to me in my youth showed up. Sorry to hear that. And I bolted away with all my luggage in hand and my friend said I gave Mary Poppins energy to which I responded super califragic queer kids feeding out the door says <laughs> that's so much that's so much <laughs> oh my god <laughs> <sighs> best grilled cheese i had was a pumpkin patch where they put their house spicy raspberry sauce on with white cheese and sliced ham <gasps> god that sounds good oh man that sounds incredible that sounds so powerful <sighs> all right just gotta simmer simmer we'll stir in some spinach stir it until it wilts salt and pepper it as best as i can and then it'll be time for soup god i'm so excited about soup oh i'm getting hungry this is much later than i usually eat dinner <laughs> normally i eat dinner before a stream and it's not quite as much a production and this is going well i was nervous I think it's going okay. Yeah, I'm hyped for soup. Where am I gonna put this pan? Where am I gonna put this hot pan to let it cool? It should be fine on cardboard. It should be fine on cardboard. I'll put it on some cardboard. I'm not patient. It's called Melba sauce, but it's just raspberry jam. Oh. Oh. Putting jam on a grilled cheese is like kind of top tier. It's kind of it's kind of <laughs> really top tier culinary work. I could never. I do I like I do like a mustard. I like like especially like a honey mustard on a grilled cheese. Uh or like um a Dijon Dijon mustard. Some to add a little bit of spice, a little bit of tang, a little brown, a little, little brown mustard maybe. A pesto, pesto on grilled cheese. What kind of cheese would you melt? Would you pair with that other than American cheese? Obviously, I feel like pesto and like maybe like a mozzarella American mix. Ooh, a smoked gouda might be nice, or a goat cheese. Oh, the grassiness of a goat cheese with some pesto. Oh, oh. Yes. HelloFresh grilled cheese comes with garlic herb butter. <laughs> I'm curious how HelloFresh recommends you make their grilled cheese. I have a very specific grilled cheese method and it's never failed me, but I've been critiqued about it before. I think if it if it works, it works. That's how I feel about my green cheese method, grilled cheese method. Oh, I just realized that the captions are not visible. There we go. 
There I am. Sorry about that. I didn't realize this whole time that they weren't visible. I only realized it when I said green cheese and then I looked to see if the captions captured me. Fuck up that statement. Um, and they hadn't. <laughs> so they weren't visible. <laughs> oh, soup soon. So soon. I'm just getting ready. I'm testing the spinach. It is spinach. Good news. I love when soups uh, have Easter and spinach or like kale or a green at the last minute. Add a little bit of color. I can't believe there was a spinach quote. quote. <laughs> was that from when I played that Popeye game? I do feel strong all of a sudden. I feel like I'm finally getting the iron I need in my diet. Vampire Survivors is a good guess. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> and some good advice about not shaking your ass off. Which can be a real danger. put Popeye in Vampire Survivors. <laughs> that would be funny. What if Vampire Survivors became like Fortnite, but only for old cartoons and old TV shows? What if they got Columbo in Vampire Survivors is what I'm saying. <laughs> what if they, yeah, what if they got original Scooby-Doo in Vampire Survivors? I think that would work actually. I think that would be okay. All right, I'm going to dump the spinach in. It's time. Too much spinach and not enough space. I splashed a little soup.
That's soup, baby. That is soup. Let me see. I use my measuring cup to pour out this beautiful soup. Oh, the camera does not know what to do with autofocus. Well, hopefully it'll find my face later. <laughs> Let me see if I can get it to autofocus on this beautiful bowl of soup. Look at the soup! Camera! Oh, ho, 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 ho. Doesn't it look beautiful? This is by far the nicest looking soup I've ever made on a campfire stove burner. Most of the soups I've made on a campfire stove burner are ramen, <laughs> and that's just it. Um, beautiful ramen, but ramen. Oh, it's hot. <laughs> Predictably hot. but extremely tasty. Um, it's really good. I don't know if it's the sausage that has spice or if it was the, um, the spice packet, the so delicioso spice packet we mixed in. But it was really good. Uh, let me cut a little bit of focaccia too. So delicioso. I don't know what's happening with the colors of the camera. It keeps wanting to give us a 70s throwback kind of vibe. Here's the focaccia, in case you're wondering. I cooked it. It came, I think it came mostly pre-cooked. Uh, and then I popped it in the fridge. It was so sizzling. It was so sizzling. Like it was covered with olive oil, but like in a very pleasant way when I pulled it out of the oven. How am I? This, is, this knife is not up to the task of cutting this focaccia. Oh no, there it goes. I just needed the right angle. Huh. <laughs> too much. That's too much focaccia. Oh. God, beautiful. Okay. Oh, here it is. You can see it with the focaccia. Hold on. Let me get a good angle. I'm always impressed with people who are good at food photography because I am not good at food photography. I am good at food eat. It's a fruit knife, not a bread knife. <laughs> got me. You got me. Oh, ho, ho. I'm so excited. The soup is really good. It is really, really good. The pecan chicken I had was also really good. We shouldn't eat on stream. This is a terrible idea. It's really good. The uh, focaccia also, uh, as far as like a, a dunking agent, and a beautiful soup. Very good. And this is a weird thing to say, but I feel like because the recipes are 
kind of designed to look good. They look good when I make them. Um, like this has such a beautiful mix. The spinach really does add such a visual interest in it. And the pecan chicken with the salad on the sign was so elaborate and delightful. Um, it there it, like clearly they have been designed in by a corporation to look nice so that they photograph nice because that's just how food is these days. But it's kind of it feels nice knowing that I like did make this dish and it turned out looking so nice. Like, I feel good about it. I feel good about how it looks. <laughs> um, and it's topiary. I totally miss you gifting 20 subs. Thank you so much. I just saw that in my little activity feed section. I missed that entirely. I was making soup. I'm sorry. Hmm. <laughs> It was legitimately extremely good soup. I think this would be nice actually to take camping. Like I can imagine uh, if you got like all one pot meals and you knew where you were going camping on a weekend and you had a cooler, I think that could actually work out really nicely. Because then you don't have to worry about taking a full thing of mayonnaise or a full thing of salt. Um, or a full thing of like most of these stuff you could just because it's all it's all just so much easier I actually think that would be a really good idea I'm bringing myself around to my own idea <laughs> hmm hey Drew yeah Plating does matter, Lunar Reach. It's something I forget about. Um, or especially, I don't know, especially where I'm at with food, which is difficult. <laughs> um, food is difficult and meals are difficult. And reliably feeding myself is difficult. Um, and so something like HelloFresh, on the one hand, feels like a luxury almost. Um, but on the other hand doing something that enables me to feed myself regularly is not a luxury and if that's something i can't feel don't feel like i have the emotional <laughs> um perseverance to do regularly then doing something like this it, while being a luxury also feels like something that's justifiable and like i just made an entire pot of soup that has at least I would say two or three more servings in it. I have very little dishes to actually do. I've got a lot of cleanup, but it's mostly just like recycling stuff. <laughs> That's how you feel about it? Okay. Yeah, I can really see like at the end of the day, like it's cheaper than eating out. It's nicer than eating out. And I still get like the emotional sensory benefit of cooking because i really like cooking uh i really like cooking and i really don't like eating out <laughs> is like the one two punch of it and so the fact that this is like cheaper than i could reasonably eat out with um while giving me the like capacity to cook still is pretty satisfying it's pretty satisfying We'll see. I don't know if I'll get four meals at once because I'm a person um, cooking for themselves and four meals at once feels like a lot. Like when I got him, I was like, this doesn't seem like much, but and as I've been cooking, it's been a little bit like, oh, uh. I also just have like a personal, I just personally don't like ordering from food apps. Um, like I grew up in the woods, so we never got takeaway. If if any, if we were ever going to get food out, it was because somebody was bringing it. Somebody in the family was bringing it for us. Um, 
And so I just never got used to, and I know apps are a new thing, but like it always just feels weird to me. Like somebody's just going to bring me that food. Isn't that food for them? Shouldn't they be bringing it to themselves? It's all just, it's too much. It's too much for me. <laughs> I'm just not good at it. It's a, it's a weird emotional barrier that I've, I've struggled to, to surmount. So good. Genuinely so good. Anyway. I'm really pleased with my with my experience with HelloFresh. Uh, I've got to sit down and decide if I'm going to continue with my subscription. I think I'm going to, at least for a little bit. It might depend on how the other two meals I got. Because the other meal I got was the risotto and the fish dish fish dish um uh, but if they're as much a banger as the first two have been then i think i'm gonna keep going with it um because it is really nice it is really nice and i like that i can keep the recipes and use them again like this soup was very straightforward it was a really straightforward soup and it's got meat and chickpeas and spinach in it get out of here get out of here with that What I don't have is a napkin. <laughs> hey, Lottie. Lottie is one of the devs at Necrosoft Games, where I'm doing marketing work with. Hey, Lottie. We made soup. <laughs> In the back of my mind, I was like, well, this will take 20 minutes to make soup, and then we'll um, just go back to streaming the game. But that's just not how that's going to go. That's just simply it. <laughs> this is it. The rest of the stream is me eating the soup and being happy about eating soup. I only used about half the onions, but there is still a lot of onions in this. I normally, I, I like onions, but I always feel like recipes call for twice as much onion and half as much garlic as they need. It's true. I did not account for enjoying soup time. <laughs> Mime down. Thank you for the gift subs. The stream still says it's a citizen sleeper stream, I think. <laughs> it's simply not the case. At least double the garlic. At least. At least. I eyeball it. When it feels like I've hit it, then I've hit it. But that's usually at least, at least double garlic. Beef burgers with apple in them? Beef burgers with apple in them? I'm fascinated. Was there was there toppings on the burger? <laughs> yep, you can use my link or go to HelloFresh.com and use code POGHF22471 for 21 free meals plus shipping. Free shipping. 21 free, <laughs> free meals plus free shipping. Mm. Oh, weird little bat. I have a friend who is allergic to garlic and onion, too. And it is a nightmare for him to eat out. Because you always have to be like... <laughs> he always has to ask, and they're always like, yeah. And then if it, the answer is yes, then he just can't eat it. Because, like, most of it is pre-prepped in such a way that, like, you can't just not have the garlic or onions in it. It is a nightmare. I feel so bad for him. Oh no, Nicholas! I'm sorry to hear that. I feel like that's like a relatively common allergy, so the fact that people are not chill about it is extremely obnoxious. Queerman, thank you for the resubscribe. That was some good ass soup. That was some good ass soup. I didn't say it loud enough. Anxious Topiary, thank you for the additional gift sub. Damn. Oh. 
I've got soup belly now. I've got warm soup belly. I didn't bring salt or pepper, but I did remember to bring Tupperware so that I can um, take the soup home and have more soup tomorrow. Oh, I should just leave it here. And then I can eat it tomorrow in the office. I feel like I want to take a nap, but it's way too late to take a nap. Oh, the onion Tupperware is not big enough for the amount of soup that I have left. I genuinely have like, I would say three, three servings of soup left. I, it's hard to make only two servings of soup. So I can see, I can see how that was an issue. Um, but I mean, it was legitimately one pot. Uh, and I have Tupperware to do because it was a, a movable soup, but uh, I think it's pretty impressive. I'm pretty impressed with this recipe. I don't know where the I don't know where the paper is. It's somewhere down there. Uh, pu sleepy puppy syndrome, full belly, warm sleepy. Yeah. If I were at home, I would turn off the stream and curl right up into bed and just um, just let that be my day. <laughs> I'm purposely not putting the blanket over my lap because I feel like if I did that, I would fall asleep. Soup is so good. Soup's so good. I, I haven't made much soup at all this winter because it's, it's just um, now that I work in an office, now that I have like an office space, it's, it's hard to sit down and spend like an hour, two hours making soup. And that's how you do you start with the chicken bones. I even have I even have a sack in the freezer full of chicken bones and vegetables that I need to make into a broth. But it's just like, ugh. It takes time. I just don't have that time. I need to make that time. Ah, soup dopamine effect. <laughs> the freezer sack of shame. I am a little ashamed of it. If somebody went through my freezer and pulled it out, I would be like, listen, I don't know what to tell you. I didn't eat those carrots in time. You know, time makes the fool of us all. Uh, and that's why we make stock. I think that's a saying. I think Julia Child said that. I think Julia Child said that. Yeah. She also said, if you have warm soup belly, just take a nap. Just nap it right off. Yeah, this, the recipe, I think, is my, if you had, like, a legit stove top, I think this recipe would have taken a lot less time. Um, as, you know, we work with the tools we are given, by which I mean the tools that we prepare. <laughs> uh, when my full butane stove comes in, it'll be a lot easier uh, to cook in the office. Not that I plan on making this a regular thing, although I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be honest with you, it's pretty delightful. It's pretty delightful. So we'll see. Anxious Topiary, thank you for the gift sub. Everybody getting subbed. Everybody getting subbed in the chat. Everybody getting soup subbed. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, soup streams. I, I got a katatsu, I think I mentioned earlier in the winter. And I would love, love more than anything to have like a cozy katatsu stream. But that's another thing where it's like, I have to get better internet for that to function. That would be so nice. Curling up under katatsu, eating oranges, knitting, watching a thing. Oh, that would be so cozy. I'm just going to do that. Actually, I just, I already just kind of do that in the evenings when I am done. When I am done with the, this, when I am done with these things. Mm, and I just, I curl up under my katatsu, get my leggies all warm. So that when I go and curl into my cold, cold bed, I'm still warm and I warm it up. I, I tuck her, I tuck her down in with the blanket all the way up over my eyes so that if somebody comes in here, they think I'm not really there and I can startle them. That's how I do it. Soup stream. <laughs> I'm so cozy. <laughs> I, I'm not tired. Am I tired? No, I'm not tired. I'm just real cozy. I just such good warm soup belly. I've invented a new category, soup stream. <laughs> soup stream, soup stream, soup stream. It's nice. It's nice. Soup's nice. It's nice to eat. It's nice to eat nice food. 
And it's nice to cook nice food and then eat that nice food. That's how I feel about it. I'm going to take, I think I'm going to take the risotto over to my friend's Justin's house. I'm going to make him the risotto. And we're going to watch RuPaul's Drag Race. That's, that's our weekend plans. That's my weekend plans. He probably has other stuff happening, but that's it for me. I'm going to wake up, wake up, be awake for two hours, just long enough to make risotto and watch RuPaul's Drag Race. And I'm going to curl back under my blanket. Gazpacho stream. That would be, you know what would be great about a gazpacho stream is that that does not involve any cooking. So that would be really great. Yeah, BCBP Justin, my DM. My DM Justin. I'm gonna make him that risotto. Fatten him up a little for no reason. <laughs> for no dire, dark reason. Oh, okay. What else do I need to do? I don't need to do anything else. Oh, I'm gonna plug my, my link again. Use my link or go to hellofresh.com to use code P-O-G-H-F for 21 free uh, meals plus free shipping. There it is. I was waiting for it to, to come up. Uh, you can see it, it's there. These will be up. Um, the, the advertising stuff will be up for a little bit. So if you are not ready to leap now, but you decide in a week or two that you are, you can do it. You can use that you can use that code then. Once again trying to imagine if Justin is tall or not. I'll never tell. It's impossible to know. Um Yeah, Mozart Goats, there it is. Thank you. Ah, oh, If you stop you would say use my link or go to hell. <laughs> um uh, the last thing I wanted to end off the stream was another poem. It's another food poem. I don't think this one will make me cry. I mean, I hope this one won't, won't, won't make me cry. I don't want to get a reputation for crying at food poetry, even if it's a well-earned and well-deserved reputation. Um, but this is by Li Young Lee. And if you're not familiar with Li Young Lee, I cannot recommend his poetry enough. I'm going to drop a link into the chat so y'all can find this poem later. Um, but yeah, I could not, I cannot recommend Li Young Lee's um, poetry enough. It's all incredible and it's all beautiful. And a lot of it's weird. <laughs> it's really, really good. Um, it's called From Blossoms. From Blossoms come this brown bag, paper bag of peaches we bought from the boy at the bend in the road, where we turn towards signs painted peaches. From laden boughs, from hands, from sweet fellowship in the bends, comes nectar at the roadside. Succulent peaches we devour, dusty skin and all. Comes the familiar dust of summer, dust we eat. Oh, to take what we love inside, to carry within us an orchard, to eat not only the skin but the shade, not only the sugar but the days, to hold the fruit in our hands, adore it, then bite into the round jubilance of peach. There are days we live as if death were nowhere in the background, from joy to joy to joy, from wing to wing, from blossom to blossom to impossible blossom to sweet impossible blossom. People just do this with words. Isn't that wild? Lee Young Lee's great. He has another one that's, I think, more famous called Persimmons, which I think is like his, like the poem that people know from him, even if they don't know the rest of his poetry. And that's really good, too. It's just so beautiful. From joy to joy to joy, from ring, wing to wing, from blossom to blossom to impossible blossom to sweet impossible blossom. It's so good. It's so good. The Persimmon poem's really good, too, and you should read it. I want a poetry kick recently. I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know why. Poetry's nice. And I don't read as much of it as I should. But it's always good for my brain, I think, to read it. It's because Paul was talking about it. It's because Paul was talking about it recently. And I told him to get a book of Charles Simic's poems. And then Charles Simic died like two weeks ago. Uh, and it was just like, this is a lot. But poetry's good. I should read more poetry. It's hard to find good new poets. Like, there's all the poets that I know and love. Like, Lee Young Lee has been publishing for forever. Um, but I, I feel like I need to find new poets. This, this is the thing I'm adding to my mental list to do. Poets are vibe scientists. All right. <laughs> Have a good weekend, everybody. Have a good rest of your week. Have a good weekend. I'll see you Sunday at the normal time, which is 11 a.m. Central Time. Uh, yeah. Have a good rest of your day. I'm going to go sleep. Bye.